Welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as your facilitator for our session this evening. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our amazing presenters at any point throughout our session today. Second, your camera and microphone are off, so we cannot see or hear you. Third, this is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week or so in case you miss any of the information presented today. With that said, I'm going to turn it over to our first college, and I hope everyone enjoys our sessions today. Thank you. All right. Hey, Scott Myers here with Lebanon Valley College. I am joined uh, by my colleague, uh, Mr. Chance Adkins. And uh, Chance is uh, the representative for New Jersey uh, for Lebanon Valley. So uh, he's uh, going to be the, the point person here, but uh, we're both going to uh, uh, present uh, together here. And I uh, just want to talk to you a little bit about, uh, about Lebanon Valley. And we're a small private liberal arts institution. You probably heard that term before. Uh, we are located in Anvil, Pennsylvania. Now, where is Anvil, Pennsylvania? We are located just 15 minutes just east of Hershey, Pennsylvania, uh, Chocolate Town, USA. So it is uh, a place you've probably been to before. And, uh, you know, we'd love for you to, to come on back. So if you ever go to Hershey Park uh, or to visit Chocolate World, uh, definitely make sure to, uh, to visit Lebanon Valley uh, very close by. Uh, now, some of the, uh, the, you just remember one thing about Lebanon Valley, just remember this one thing right here, that Lebanon Valley is number one in the state of Pennsylvania in getting students jobs for three years in a row. Uh, so we're number five, this year we're number five in the country, and uh, that happens in many ways. Certainly, as a small school, you're going to be connected to the faculty from day one, who is still very connected in their uh, different re respective fields as well. Uh, so... What that means is they can get you connected to uh, specific uh, jobs and internships and alumni, but you'll work together with our Green Center for Graduate Success, and that is our Career Services Center, and uh, they're designed to really work with you from day one, even inside your classroom. It's meant to go hand in hand uh, with uh, the curriculum here at Lebanon Valley. Uh, that uh, Career Center is headed by uh, a teaching faculty member. Uh, who work with you every step of the way in making sure you have all the skills you'll need to be successful once you leave the institution. So they'll help you write and revise resumes, cover letters. They'll also make sure that you have all the interviewing skills that you'll need. Uh, develop an online presence as well. So that's vitally important when you're uh, on the job search, and that really starts from day one. So again, remember, LBC is number one in the state of Pennsylvania, three years in a row getting students jobs. Lots of majors on our campus, over 40 to choose from. I just uh, pulled out about uh, some of our most popular 10 uh, that you'll see right there. What makes us a little bit unique uh, are, is physical therapy. Now, we are a small private liberal institution. Like I mentioned, 1,600 students on our campus, about 20 students in a classroom, and about 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So small class sizes, professors will get to know who you are. And, uh, but uh, we have a great program, a six year doctorate of physical therapy program that is housed entirely on our campus in a brand new building and uh, designed for, for you to uh, become a doctor uh, by the time you graduate and be able to uh, sit for the certification exams and to practice as a physical therapist. So we're very excited about that program. Business, uh, psychology, even speech language pathology designed to really get you started within the workforce really uh, as soon as you get out of uh, camp, uh, as soon as you graduate from campus. Uh, speech language pathology uh, is a five year program and uh, that is all housed on our, uh, on our uh, campus. That is also a master's level program. But again, small class sizes, lots of majors to choose from. LBC is number one in the state of Pennsylvania getting students jobs. So what else is there to do outside of campus, uh, outside of the classroom? I'll turn things over to uh, Chase Adkins. All right, so along with everything that you can do in the classroom, we also have stuff outside the classroom. This, in, this includes music, theater, uh, art, 
club sports, we have a large, large number of club sports that could be from, from flag football, uh, club volleyball. Uh, we also have intramural sports as well. So if you're not interested in the sports or any other clubs, we have student government, Valley Blue Coats, and many more. Moving on, we are a D3 school. Uh, we have 12 men's and 13 women's varsity sports. We have co-ed varsity esports, which is actually a very growing uh, community that we're all about. So as it says right there, further teamwork and more pride bringing to the Valley. And definitely you want to stay connected to us here. Uh, just go into our website, lvc.edu. You can apply uh, for free uh, for juniors right now, just uh, starting in uh, August. Any, if there uh, happens to be any seniors there, we are still accepting applications. Uh, would love for you to uh, go ahead and apply, lvc.edu. And uh, you can look up uh, Chance and I, and uh, we'd love to connect with you. Right. So um, good evening, everybody. My name is Mitch Marcus. I'm one of our admissions coordinators with Rutgers University, New Brunswick. I'm just going to quickly share my screen, get this going. All right, perfect. So thanks, everybody, again, for joining us this evening. I'm really excited to talk to you more about the university and the opportunities that we have here at Rutgers University in New Brunswick. For those of you not familiar with our university or just exploring us for the first time, I did want to introduce you to some pieces that are really key to the university at itself. So we are proud to be a part of the Big Ten Conference. And what that means for us is that we have both academic and athletic partnerships that really help connect us to a major network outside of the university. So we work with a lot of our peer institutions on collaborative work throughout the campus. For those of you who are interested in coming to a school that really speaks to the larger world that we kind of live in, we are the number one most diverse school within our Big Ten Conference. And so we're really proud to bring in students from a variety of different areas, parts of the globe, and even across the country to come to our campus itself. Um, we do also offer a large number of outside student organizations, 750 plus to be exact. And I'll cover a little bit more about that in detail as we go through today's presentation. Jumping into the next part, um, I know, unfortunately, we can't be together physically, and while we wish we could all, you know, get to know you a little bit more in that context, I'm glad that we're still able to connect through this virtual environment and, and have you learn more about the university today. So what you're seeing in front of you is kind of a, a brief layout of our campus structure. So we have a five neighborhood concept. We have five very distinct areas on our campus that kind of give you a different feel and understanding of what it's like to be a Rutgers University New Brunswick student. So we have atmospheres that range from being very subjective urban in nature to settings that are a little bit more urban and kind of in that downtown New Brunswick area, which is maybe what some of you are more familiar with. And then going to a more rural setting, we have that Douglas and Cook campus, which we um, occupy our farm with and a lot of other programs that we'll get in more detail about in a second. The other thing is that we are really connected to two major cities through our campus. We have direct connectivity to both New York City, which is about a little less than an hour away by train and Philadelphia, which is about an hour and a half. So for anybody thinking about internship or research opportunities, with major companies, we do have access to it through that major transportation on campus. Now, when it comes to student life itself, um, I did allude to that we have 750 plus student organizations on the campus, but we also do have a number of different initiatives on our campus as well to help you stay involved. For those of you who identify as being the first in your family to go to college, we have this large access program called the RU First Initiative, and that really helps you to provide some additional peer mentor and support resources that might be important to you if you're thinking about taking advantage of those opportunities in your academic journey. We're also part of the Big Ten Conference, and so that means we have a number of different Division one sports, both men's and women's athletics. If you are interested in intramural or club sports, we do offer those as well. Um, in addition to our philanthropic opportunities, there's a number of different ways to get involved. If you really want to give back to the community, that's a large part of what we do and encourage our students to be a part of is that larger community practice and, and really getting yourself involved outside of the campus. 
In terms of our academics, which we know is really a key concept to why you might be looking at a school like us, we do offer over 100 different majors throughout seven first year schools. Those are the flags that are listed in red. I'm not going to go too much in depth about each of the schools, but essentially all you need to know is that we do have a large liberal arts college or School of Arts and Sciences. For those of you thinking about more professional and refined studies, we offer a School of Engineering with 10 different engineering tracks and a School of Pharmacy, which is direct admit out of high school. It's a six year PharmD program, so you do to obtain your doctorate. We have a school of nursing as well for students who are interested in that area within healthcare. For those of you who are just thinking about the STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math fields in general, we have the School of Environmental and Biological Sciences with some very niche programs. For those of you who are thinking about our business field, we have the Rutgers Business School available to you for any majors that you're thinking about within that realm. And last but not least is our Mason Grove School of the Arts. For those of you who are very academically talented or creatively talented and interested in working on your craftsmanship, whether it's through art, music, dance, for example, we do offer those opportunities in a smaller arts conservatory that's part of our larger campus setting. If you are interested in any of the schools in white, you do have to be a first year student to apply into those particular majors like communication, like social work, for example. So we can definitely chat more about that later on once we get to the contact information. And then last but not least, I just want to touch base really quickly about how to apply for those of you thinking about getting ready for next year to apply to the university where you can find us and what steps you need to take to get there. So we're available on either the Rutgers application or the coalition application. We don't have a preference for either one, but you're welcome to find us on either platform. We do just ask that students submit a self-reported academic record. So this is kind of like, instead of asking for transcripts, we have you actually send us your grades through a self-reported portal. So we do ask that you're honest and accurate when you report those grades to us. For any juniors who are on this webinar this evening, we are going to be SAT or ACT optional for 2022, meaning that you do not need to take the SAT or ACT exams to apply to the university for any of our first year schools next year. We do also have a $70 application fee and that allows students to apply to three of the seven first year schools that you kind of briefly saw a minute ago. But if you do have a fee waiver or it would pose a financial hardship to pay that fee, we're absolutely happy to provide a waiver if necessary. And then in terms of our dates and deadlines, um, for those of you getting ready to apply next year, I know spring is kind of the getting the gears forward as you think about this process. November one is gonna be an early action deadline, meaning that it's a non-binding agreement. You just apply a little bit earlier to us and hear from us a little bit sooner than our December one candidates who apply for a regular decision deadline. The thing to note if you're interested in any of our honors or merit-based aid opportunities is that you just have to apply by December 1st in order to be considered for any of those opportunities that we have available on our campus. And then last but not least, I just want to provide some contact information to each of you so that you can get in touch with us if you do have any lingering questions that you're not able to get addressed tonight on this webinar. So please do feel free to reach out to us via our um, email address, questions at admissions.ruckers.edu. We are also accepting phone calls at this time, so you're welcome to give us a call at 848-445-1000. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to my next colleague to present, and thank you all for listening. Good evening, uh, New Jersey. My name is Stephanie Dupuy, and I'm one of our Associate Deans of Admission at Salve Regina University in beautiful Newport, Rhode Island. And I'm also an alumna of the university as well. Oops. I can't get, there we go. Um, just to begin, I always start the conversation about Salve with where we began. And that is with the Sisters of Mercy who started Salve Regina University. The Sisters of uh, Mercy are from Dublin, Ireland, and they became known in the Dublin community as the walking nuns because they were a group of women um, who unlike most nuns were not living in a cloistered environment. They were working amongst impoverished citizens in Dublin, um, specifically in areas of social work, healthcare, and education. A lot of people know the Sisters of Mercy now for starting schools and hospitals. Um, and when they obtained the charter to start Salve Regina University in Newport, Rhode Island, um, just about 75 years ago, they did so in order to educate young women to go into helping professions with the hope that they'd focus on the critical concerns like earth, immigration, women, racism, and nonviolence, and have those critical conversations to make the world a bit more harmonious, just, and merciful. Salve has grown and changed a lot since we, um, we began. We now have 2,100 undergraduate students. We're located on about 80 acres in this 
beautiful Oceanside campus. Our campus is made of Gilded Age estates um, that have been transformed into classrooms and into residence halls where our students live and learn. But we are right on the water, right on the Atlantic Ocean in Newport, Rhode Island, about 40 minutes south of Providence, a little over an hour south of Boston. 85% of our students do hail from out of state. Um, so we are not a suitcase school. We're not a school where people pack up and go home on the weekends, um, but they truly make Salve in the Newport community um, their home away from home. Salve is a um, liberal arts university and all students will take a core curriculum of liberal arts classes while they're students. One of the things I liked best about being a student at Salve is that my class sizes were small. On average, our class sizes are 18 and it's a 13 to one student to teacher ratio. So I do find that our students truly connect with not only the faculty, but their peers. Um, we have a, a center uh, for academic excellence in our library that provides tutoring services and a writing center for students, but I find so often our students connect with their faculty in really meaningful ways as they are mentored through their educational journey. Um, I mentioned we have 2,100 undergraduate students. Students will come into the university with a class of about 550 to 600 students, and some of our more popular majors um, are nursing, education, business administration, biology and the biomedical science, sciences, um, psychology, um, and there's a full list of programs here for you to peruse and students do not have to declare their majors until they are um, at the end of their sophomore year. However, if they know what they want to study, they can get into those courses um, from the get go when they begin. We do also, I want to mention, have a direct entry nursing program as well. Some additional minors and pre-professional programs. We also have some accelerated five-year master's degree programs, an MBA, um, applied behavioral analysis, administration of justice and homeland security. So some really terrific programs for you to check out. Hands-on learning is our approach, and this experiential learning is going to be critical to your experience um, in our small classrooms. You'll notice here students in a variety of different classroom atmospheres, whether it's in the labs or on stage or working as these students on the right are um, with our cultural and historic preservation program doing archaeological digs. Our students are getting their hands dirty, quite literally, um, and putting to work what they're learning in the books and in their classrooms and from their uh, professors in real-world experiences and internships. Outside of the classroom, our students are really involved in the community. We're truly fortunate to have a wonderful connection with the Newport community and our students participate in um, many clubs and organizations. We have 20 Division Three varsity athletics teams. Um, and the one piece to our experience at Salve that I always enjoyed is the connection to the community through service. Um, here's some information just in regards to our applications and requirements. Salve is a common app school. Um, the most important part of your application is going to be your high school transcript. We do look at the applications um, very holistically. We look to see what our students are doing in the classroom um, and also how they're contributing to their school and community. Two letters of recommendation are also required, but Salve is SAT and ACT optional. We have a few different options for applying. We have early action and early decision as well as regular decision as well. Many of our students do receive merit scholarships and a wide variety um, of financial aid. Um, there's some, some of it is listed here for you to peruse and we can certainly find a lot of this on our website. Lastly, Salve has been in person. We've been incredibly lucky to be in person over the last year. Um, and we are offering in-person campus tours, but a wide variety of virtual information sessions and open houses. I work with all of our students in New Jersey and really enjoy getting to know students through um, virtual interviews. Here's my contact information. I look forward to working with many of you through your um, college search process and look forward to welcoming you to our campus. Um, good luck and um, ask lots of questions tonight. Um, we appreciate that you've taken some of your evening to, to spend with us. And Danielle, you are on mute. Good evening, everybody. 
Thanks, Jasmine. So good to be with you tonight. My name is Danielle Toglia and I represent San Diego State University. The first thing I usually mention to students is that a little bit uh, perhaps unique to the admission process. I live in my home state of New Jersey and I run a regional office for San Diego State University here in New Jersey, working with students from the state again of New Jersey and New, and New York. Um, so it's really a, a distinct honor and pleasure to get to know students really well and to work with them and their counselors at their high schools um, on this journey you know, of the, of the admission process. So anytime I can be of help uh, or answer any questions that you might have that are very specific to San Diego, to California, to the university, I would be more than happy to point out. I know it's a, it's a big trip. We are about 3000 miles away from home, um, but I promise you well worth the trip if in fact SDSU is a good fit for you. Um, San Diego State University is located actually in San Diego, California, which is the second largest uh, state in California. And the university um, is actually a Forbes best value. Uh, we rank 35th nationally in terms of ethnic diversity. We actually rank fifth in the nation for the amount of students that we send to a study abroad opportunity every year. So we are hoping obviously that things will ease up quite quickly as our students are anxious to get to one of the 700 opportunities that we offer. And we offer about 202 academic degree programs. I'll concentrate, of course, on the undergraduate degree programs that would be uh, eligible and opportunities that would be open to you. And there are about 97 of them in total. Um, we offer you uh, studies in business administration. The Fowler College is an accredited college of business with a very popular major and most popular in finance. We have eight accredited programs in our School of Engineering and a Lead Green Engineering building, which is the state-of-the-art facility. Our students really enjoy the collaborative interdisciplinary approach in the College of Engineering. We have a School of Education if you'd like to teach elementary, secondary, or special education, something to, to think about in terms of accreditation. We have a very popular health and human services uh, opportunity. If you are interested in nursing, I do mention is it is our most competitive program and you do need to apply to that major from high school. It is the only opportunity to apply into the major and once enrolled at SDSU, unfortunately, you cannot move into the program. Um, other programs, of course, of popularity include kinesiology, the health sciences, food and nutrition, and speech hearing uh, sciences. We also have a, a School of Professional Studies and Fine Arts, uh, a little bit of a, a mix of different types of opportunities there, um, including again, a very large program in criminal justice, our most popular major in uh, fine arts and um, a growing popularity, of course, given where we're located in television, film and new media. Um, but there are some great programs there for students who have a lean in art, music, dance, or theater. As a liberal arts university, of course, we do have a college of arts and letters. Uh, there are a number of different programs there. It is our largest college. And you'll find your traditional majors that you might be familiar with from high school, like philosophy or religion, maybe a sociology course, French, English, of course, and then a college of the sciences. Uh, more your traditional hard sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, um, microbiology, as well as um, statistics and mathematics. We also allow for pre-professional studies. If you are the student who would like to continue your studies uh, into a law school, medical school, a pharmacy school. So there's plenty of opportunity for advising at the undergraduate level. So that obviously when you are thinking about how you're going to combine your options, perhaps majors and minors, with an internship, research, service opportunity, a study abroad, that you're always progressing correctly toward the next level of study, right? We're not only concerned with what you do for the four years that you spend with us, but really for the four years after that, and the four years after that, and the four years after that. So plenty of opportunity in terms of advising, especially at a large place like us. I mentioned that we're in San Diego, about 360 days of sunshine, which I think is a nice juxtaposed to this winter that we've had in New Jersey. And I'm a little jealous of my colleagues lately, uh, but we do sit very close to the downtown, beaches, mountains, deserts, hiking trails, biking trails, walking trails, all accessible by our trolley. Our trolley um, looks like a little cable car, uh, some easy uh, stop right on the campus. The stop uh, is a blue or, I'm sorry, the red or the black line. And the trolley allows students access to all of these opportunities so that you can get around with public transportation rather than having to worry about an automobile, of course. We are the only four-year institution uh, in San Diego, California with a trolley stop. So we're really proud of that. And it does make things very easy for our students, as you can imagine. 
So great to get to Target or to Trader Joe's or to uh, the grocery store. We're always concerned, obviously, about students, again, access out of the classroom, right? It's a combination of putting your theory into practice. And so the Weber Honors College could be a good opportunity for you if you'd like to challenge yourself in addition. The undergraduate research opportunities are enormous at the university. We offered $148.5 million to undergraduate students last year to do research. And we have a very busy career services division, one that will help students to put resumes together, interview, uh, think about interviewing skills, and obviously um, work with alumni who serve as mentors um, in order to help you to gain experience and exposure and thinking about, again, um, building a resume. Admitted students for last year, uh, had an, an average of about a 377 GPA. And uh, I just listed SAT and ACT here because we did accept that year. We are a test blind institution for both this year's current seniors as well as this year's current juniors. So you will not submit an SAT or an ACT sc score to us. We will not be adding your score to your file review. Uh, we will, however, be asking you to file an application and that application is through the Cal State system at calstate.edu forward slash apply. And similar to Mitchell at Rutgers uh, mentioning a, a self-reported application, the SDSU application is self-reported. So it's relaying the information that's most important in the process, your academic work, the type of course that you're taking and the level of difficulty of that course, including your grades uh, for all four years that you spend in high school. And that's where we'll make, of course, the variety of our decisions. We're looking at that information. So please be accurate take a look at your high school transcript, maybe an unofficial copy in front of you so that you're not forgetting anything. And of course, you're relaying all the data that's important in that transcript. Um, in terms of the A through G requirements, we do look at four years of English, three years of math, two years of science, social science and language. And I do wanna mention one year of visual arts. So it really is important that you're concentrating on that one year of visual arts if in fact your high school doesn't require it, you will have to sit in an art, music, dance, or theater course for the SDSU and CSU system, so all 23 campuses in the public system. Um, we are a very busy place, about 300 clubs and organizations, 47 Greek organizations, and a student government that runs a $20 million budget, which oversees our Aquaplex, as well as our rec center, um, and all of the clubs and activities that exist in our student center. So it is, uh, it is a busy place. We work hard, but we play hard. We are Division I athletics. We do have club sports and intramural sports. We have a 4,000 seat open amphitheater outdoors for great concerts and uh, of the like. It, it's really an it, it, amazing space. Um, and so it's a very active community. We do ask students to live with us on campus for the first two years of housing. Um, and we do find that students do quite well when they do. So our freshmen and sophomores and perhaps upperclassmen who have the ability to live with us live in suite style residence halls across the campus. They may also live in living and learning communities and that allows them to obviously take advantage of um, likes and passions um, and share those passions with other students while they live and learn. All right, everyone. Well, welcome to Sarah Lawrence. Um, I think, you know, like Danielle, we all do wish that we could be in California right now, um, but I'm happy to introduce myself and talk about Sarah Lawrence and where we are in the world as a college. So my name is Emily Ayler. I am an admission counselor at Sarah Lawrence. Um, I am the representative for New Jersey, Southern California, and Nevada, so I am a little bit all over the country. Uh, but happy to talk with you all today about our school, where we are, what we're doing there, um, and virtually bring you to our campus. So first I wanna start with just some, some small facts, some buzz facts. Um, we are a small private liberal arts and sciences college located in Bronxville, New York. We will talk about where Bronxville is in one moment, uh, but we are on the smaller side with about 1400 undergraduate students and 300 graduate students. Um, students, if you take away one thing from my presentation today, it's truly what we're doing in terms of our academics at SLC. So students are designing their own program of studies throughout their four years. Um, and it's really unique and individual to them. We like to think of our education as a transformational educational experience rather than transactional. So you're truly learning from your peers, from your professors, and from others in your class. 
um, and you're truly learning how to take your experiences within the classroom to the external world, which I know some of us are thinking about um, as we go through the college experience and how that's gonna shape us in the uh, outside world. So first I wanna talk about where we are in the world. So New Jersey is luckily a, a hop, skip and a jump away from Westchester County. So Bronxville, New York is about 30 minutes north of New York City. We like to say we are a part of small, medium and large communities at SLC. So small being our residential community, uh, we guarantee housing for all four years. So students are allowed to live there, um, learn there and really kind of explore there from their home base. We are about 15 to 20 minutes from Yonkers, um, which is the fourth largest city in New York. And as I said, about 30 minutes, I think on the map it says 40, uh, but we're about a 40 minute train ride away from New York City. So we're really fortunate where we have a Metro North station, about a 10 minute walk all downhill. Uh, from our campus, so easy to get into the city, whether you're there to explore personally on the weekends, whether you're there for an internship or a job, um, sort of the world is your oyster in terms of what you have in your backyard. So students really depending on what they're interested in doing and how they're interested in exploring might stick a little closer to Bronxville as the small quint central New England town. They might explore Yonkers or they might explore New York City. So there's a lot of different ways to engage as a Sarah Lawrence student. So now kind of talking about our campus, since we can't be there right now, bring you all virtually to our school. We did just build the Barbara Walters Campus Center, which is an amazing addition to our campus. That is the top left picture that you're looking at there. It's a student space, which is pretty amazing. It has a dining center, um, study spaces, classroom spaces, organization spaces. So it's a really great asset in addition to our campus. On the top right, you can see what other than the snowy winter that we experienced, that is Westlands, that's our main building on campus. Um, this is actually a fun fact, the original home of William and Sarah Lawrence, the founders of the college. So before it became a living learning community as it's used for today, that was actually their original home. So students now have classrooms there, dorms there, and the office of admission there as well. In the bottom left, you can see our new Remy Theater. Um, even though we had some restrictions with COVID this year, our students were actually able to use our outdoor theaters to present their final projects and their courses, um, be able to be masked and socially distanced, but still engage and interact with their students, which is a wonderful experience. And on the bottom right, you can see our tea house. We like to call that Hagrid's Hut, but that's a great other place to study, grab a bite to eat and grab a quick coffee on campus. So now talking about our students and what they're doing inside the classroom, the liberal arts experience at Sarah Lawrence is like no other. So like I said before, you truly are designing your own program of studies at SLC. We offer over 500 courses across 50 different disciplines. So you truly have the opportunity to engage and interact in a variety of courses that maybe you know you have a passion for, or maybe you've never explored before. So that's truly what our Sarah Lawrence students are doing. They're designing and creating this program of studies that's unique to them. It really represents them. And we like to think, there is not one educational experience that fits all. You've heard of the saying, one size fits all. That's not what we're doing at Sarah Lawrence. So you have the opportunity to engage with your professors, your peers, your classmates on a really small basis. We have about nine to one ratio in terms of student to faculty. And as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, that's what we call a seminar style classroom at SLC. So about 90% of the classes that we offer are the small engaging classroom. where you are able to take a deep dive into your classroom experience alongside your peers. The other 10% that we offer are lectures in Sarah Lawrence, but they still give you that individualized experience that you would in the small seminar style class. So now talking a little bit about what are we doing at Sarah Lawrence? So two words to describe what we're doing at SLC is connecting and creating. So we're creating inside the classroom through a variety of different opportunities, whether it's research, one-on-one -on -one engagement, um, you're creating essentially work that is individual and unique to you. And then we're taking that work and we're connecting it to the outside world. So at Sarah Lawrence as a part of every seminar style class, students are able to conduct their own independent individualized research and come out of their four years with a body of work that's unique and individual to them. So if you attend or have attended any of our virtual um, experiences or events, you'll hear a lot about conference work. That's how our students are being creative they're connecting not only with the Sarah Lawrence community, but the surrounding communities as well. We really encourage students to think outside the box and connect outside of the classroom, which is very important. The community at Sarah Lawrence, pretty amazing place. 
Um, so we offer over 100 clubs and organizations at SLC. So for a school of our size, that's pretty incredible. We have 15 Division III schools, and there's a lot of different ways to get involved. So as you can see, top left-hand corner, our career fair, bottom right, a Griffins game with men's soccer, bottom left, our Festivus. It's a pretty amazing place there. So now applying an aid, as you've heard from my colleagues, we have four different rounds, early decision being binding, early action, and regular decision being non-binding. We have no application fee, so all you have to do is search on Common App, find us in your schools, and add us to your list. We have been test optional for a fairly long time now, so we are pretty adept at reading applications with and without applications, with and without test scores. Um, about 50% of our applicants choose to submit testing. Um, this year has been incredibly crazy and stressful, so we understand that submitting test scores might not be feasible in the future, so we are truly test optional. And we also have a variety of supplemental options to sort of create this holistic view of who you are as an individual and a student, including interviews, writing supplements, and creative and performing arts portfolio. So I wanna thank you all for visiting with Sarah Lawrence today. We offer a variety of virtual programming, um, hopefully in the spring as well, we'll be offering one-to-one -one tours for admitted students. So if you're an admitted student joining us today, uh, we'd love to have you on campus. But if you do have any questions, feel free to send those to me through the Q&A. My contact information is below. I'd love to hear from you all, whether it's email, um, connecting with you online, however that would work for you. But I wanna thank you all today. Um, and thank you for having me. Good evening, everyone. My name is Devin and I'm from the Savannah College of Art and Design. And I'm going to get to show you guys a whole lot of really awesome student work and all things that really could be your work very soon. So at SCAD, uh, we are the most diverse art and design university in the nation with over 100 different degree programs. So everything from animation to architecture, interior design, industrial design, film, fashion, photography, game design. We even have user experience if you wanna create apps. So whatever it may be that you enjoy doing for fun, um, except being able to click this button because it is like hovering below my start board here. So just one of those days on Zoom. But uh, whatever it is that you like to do for fun, it really translates into a major and then of course into a really amazing career. And so we have students who have gone on to work for everybody from Disney, Marvel, Pixar, Universal, to Google, IBM. We actually have several students who uh, work at NASA, including a fashion designer who helps to reinvent spacesuits. And we even have several graphic designers who work for the CIA. So they take all of the information coming in domestically and abroad and translate it into a visual so that everyone can really get to see um, and understand all of the insane numbers uh, that are really going out there. And you've actually seen quite a few with the CDC too. So apparently it won't let me click for anything because of course all we have is videos because we're in art school and we have a pretty amazing film program. So <laughs> of course everything is a video. So uh, give me just a second. Yikes. This guy, and then we're gonna do not that, not that. But um, there we go. So like I had said, we have over 100 different degree programs. So everything from animation or you can do accessory design where you can actually create, this is just not my day today, but accessory design where you can design shoes and bags to um, interior design where you can create the interiors of any sort of spaces even all the way to themed entertainment where you can design theme parks. And we do have a number of uh, internationally and uh, nationally ranked programs. Our animation program is one of the best in the country and arguably in the world. Uh, we have 2D, 3D, stop motion animation. We have voice acting classes. There are motion capture devices so you can actually be one of your characters. Uh, we do also have game design, which is about a $200 billion industry annually. So definitely something pretty amazing to be a part of. 
We have a lot of programs that you also might not affiliate with in art and design school. So we do have user experience where you can actually create your own apps. Uh, we have social strategy and management where you can be a social media mogul. There is even industrial design uh, where you can design your own cars and yachts. So again, anything that you're thinking of that you really enjoy doing can really be uh, a major and something that you pursue as a career. And so this guy will not work, even though it's super important. It is actually our employment rate. So our employment rate is actually 99%. So 99% of our 2019 graduating class was employed, seeking further education or both within 10 months of graduating. Uh, and that is not a trick. We did not count somebody who got a job at like McDonald's or Panera after they graduated. It all is actually in a creative field, doing what you studied and doing what you love. Uh, so in true art major fashion, we're going to need to use a lot of imagination because technology officially hates me today. But here <laughs> we would have um, the number of different companies that we've actually had the pleasure of working with in one of our programs in which students are actually hired to work uh, for real companies like Google, Pixar, uh, L'Oreal. We've actually helped BMW to design cars with customizable 3D printed parts. Uh, we've helped Google to redesign Google Maps. So all of these really incredible opportunities are actually part of a class that we have called SCAD Pro, uh, which is actually a uh, class slash internship with any number of amazing companies. So we do also have a number of campuses for you to explore. So Atlanta is of course a huge awesome environment where you're surrounded by Fortune 500 companies. It's also one of the largest filming locations in the world. So everybody films here from Marvel, uh, Netflix, Tyler Perry, uh, Turner Broadcasting. So if you've ever wanted to do anything related to film and TV, then you definitely want to check out Atlanta. We're also about, let's see, like three blocks from Cartoon Network. So also great for animators. Lacoste is our study abroad option. We actually have these buildings here are actually where you get to live and work in Lacoste. And the city itself is on top of a hill complete with a little castle. Lacoste itself is just this really incredible Disney-esque city with fields of lavender and sunflowers surrounding it. And we actually take you to Paris for a week while you're here. Savannah is our largest campus with over 70 buildings, most of which are historical landmark buildings. Uh, we do have e-learning, so you can study anywhere in the world. We have pre-college programs where you can get college credit for half tuition while still in high school. And for our application, we're rolling admission, so there are no deadlines, which is always nice. And we are a not-for-profit, so we are big fans of scholarship. And the scholarship process is very easy with just your grades and your portfolio. So we do have really awesome visuals, and I apologize for whatever was happening um, with this PowerPoint today. <laughs> but uh, if anybody does have any questions about anything, I'd be happy to send you more than enough visuals about how amazing uh, the work is from our students. And hopefully we'll see you at one of our on-campus events or virtual events soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. With that said, that concludes the presentation portion of our college fair today, but we do have a Q&A portion. So I would like to invite all of our panelists to return. Feel free to turn your camera back on. And I'm gonna pose a question to each of you. Feel free to respond in the order in which you presented today. So our first question for our session today is, Um, please state or give an interesting or fun fact about your school. Well, with Lebanon Valley, uh, you know, like I said, I mentioned earlier, a fun fact is, you know, we're right next to Hershey, Pennsylvania. All right, so uh, come check us out. Uh, I know, Chance, if you think of any other fun facts about, uh, about LVC, go ahead, chime right in. Uh, I would say a fun fact is that we actually have a national championship that our basketball got basketball team got a few years ago and we had a fan a fanatic that is actually uh he has a 
a mold in our peace garden, which is actually a cool thing. We have the national championship ring on his hand. So we call him hot dog Frank. So we love him. <laughs> so I would say um, one fun or interesting fact about Rutgers is that we're kind of known for our homecoming traditions. And so one of the big traditions we have on campus is called the bed races. So we allow our students to take their mattresses out of their residence halls, race them down the heart of our campus and um, all the funding and proceeds that go to the homecoming events go to a charitable organization. So just a fun little thing that we did when I was a student and uh, a cool little fact about Rutgers. One fact, a fun fact about Slava Regina is that you can live and learn in Gilded Age mansions on the water. Um, I was actually just on campus um, yesterday watching um, an HBO film series being filmed about the Gilded Age out my office window. Beautiful. Well, I'm going to give you one quick fun fact about SDSU first, and that is that we have a koi pond on the campus. A lot of our students will gather around the koi pond to relax and to take in a, a Starbucks. We have three of them and just to study and, and, uh, and really take in the scenery of California. And a really quick fun fact that I'm going to share about me is that I've been to every campus of every school that's on our panel tonight. So you are in good hands tonight, students and parents, um, because we have uh, some amazing places to see. So good luck in your search. Fun fact about Sarah Lawrence. Sarah Lawrence has definitely been mentioned in pop culture a variety of times, um, but one of our alums um, plays Wesley in The Princess Bride. So every fall we do a screening of The Princess Bride. We had a virtual and in-person option um, this year, and so that was pretty fantastic to see a tradition happen in person and also on Zoom. A lot of our fun facts at SCAD revolve around our alumni. Um, we actually had the photographer for Taylor Swift's Lover album was a SCAD grad. Taylor Swift found her on Instagram. Uh, we have a um, actually the person who designed Kamala Harris's outfit at the inauguration was a SCAD grad. He's also dressed um, Cardi B, Michelle Obama, Rihanna, Lizzo, and Lady Gaga. So. He's uh, done quite a bit and he only graduated a couple of years ago. So we'll see who he dresses next. Hopefully one of us. <laughs> I know, wouldn't that be great? Nice. Well, um, I want to thank all of our amazing panelists for sharing fun or interesting facts um, about your institution. With that said, that concludes our college fair for this evening. But I do have a few closing announcements. So the first is that a quick survey will appear as you exit out of this Zoom session. It's approximately four questions, but please respond. It's very useful for us as we aim to improve our virtual college fair options. Um, also want to remind you all that you can review the recording within about a week or so at strivescan.com slash New Jersey. With that said, I want to thank you all for joining us. I hope everyone has a great night. Um, and again, thank you to our amazing panelists as well for sharing information about your institution. Again, thank you everyone. Have a great night. Bye.